This is why I love everybody. I love everybody. Everybody. And people try to get me to hate. They try to get me to hate, boy. But I can't do it. I tried it. It won't work. I tried it. I tried it. People even ask me, you know, they try to get me stirred up about racial stuff, and I can't even do it. I just can't even do it. I, I can't even do it. Well, well, what, what do you think about the Klan? They need Jesus. I mean, I mean, <laughs> that's the way I see it. I, I, I'm not. I, they need to be saved. They need. They need their spirits resurrected. I, I'm not mad at racists. I pray for racists. See, the church can't even handle it. They. Okay. I, I do what Jesus said, and here's what Jesus said. He says, love those that hate you. Bless those that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully misuse you. So the next time you hear somebody put out a rumor on you, pray for them. Because it has been said, no, eye for an eye, the two for two. I got to tell them a piece of my mind. I got to call them up and say, why did you say that about me? I got to confront them. I've got to come against them. I've got to curse them out. I got to let them know who I am. That's the way dead people act. But people whose spirits have been resurrected... You don't chase down rumors. You don't care about what people said about you. It has no bearing whatsoever. Who cares whether they're talking about you? Peter and I were talking in the back because we, we, we were talking when you preach as much as we do, you say things all of the time. I mean, I mean, you'll say like when Moses was in the fiery furnace. How many of you know Moses wasn't in the fiery furnace? <laughs> Your mind is going at the speed of light, and sometimes we say things. We quote wrong scriptures. We, we put the wrong people in the wrong passages. We say all kinds of stuff. And we were talking about when, when uh, uh, someone wrote me and said, wait a minute, you said something that doesn't make sense, and, and, they, it, and it confused them because I said it wrong. And they wrote me about it, and I wrote them back. I say, oh, thank you for pointing that out to me. I'm glad you said that. I simply misspoke on that issue. You're actually right, and I was wrong about it. The person wrote me back and said, I can't, I can't believe this. <laughs> he said, I have more respect for you. He says, now I know why God uses you like he uses you. Because it's a weird thing, I guess, to watch people be humble. Or preachers be humble, yeah. <laughs> That's not supposed, when you're resurrected, you, you get pleasure in manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. You get pleasure at forgiving people. Come on, it'll, it'll become more and more. <laughs> yeah, so the next time you're in, a, you're in a situation where somebody has done you wrong, forgive them. Let it go. Let it go. Vengeance is mine, Seth. Let God sort it out. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, you know, right wrongs and make sure things are done and we shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't hold people accountable. That's not what I'm saying. But it's got to be done from a spirit of love. That's why the Bible says even when you speak the truth, you have to speak the truth in love. Which means everything must be done from a spiritual nature. Oh, my God, I can see it now. I can see it now. Husbands and wives walking around the house saying, that ain't no resurrected spirit right there. You, you. Oh, yeah, I just messed up everything in your house. I just messed up everything. The next time you're about to fly off, something's going to come up in you and say, that ain't the way 
a resurrected spirit handles. And instead of flying off, you will say, come, let us reason together. Sit down, dear. This is what I meant by that. This is, I don't know why I'm teaching this this morning. <laughs> See, you got to learn how now to walk like you resurrected. Now, if my spirit has been resurrected, Oh, my God. If I have been raised from the dead. If death has been removed out of my spirit. If sin has been removed out of my spirit. Then why do I still struggle? It is because your mind and your body were trained under a dead spirit. So we thought dead. Our emotions of fear and anxiety and anger and passions in our body of lust I heard Trisha talking about God can deliver you from fornication and, and pornography and all of those things. Now you know why. Because the residue of death is still in my body. My spirit was resurrected, but not my mind. It has to be renewed. Which means my real enemy now. Is my mind. It is my will. Somebody got up and prophesied about that. That God wants your will. Why? Because even though you have been raised from the dead, the way you used to think, the way you used to feel, the way we've been educated, the things we've learned, the things we've been taught, the things we were raised in, certain things in our body generationally. Some of us were born with, with weaknesses in our physical bodies, the appetites of lust and perversion. And it doesn't have to be just lust for men and women. It can be lust for Krispy Kreme. <laughs> have you noticed you never get a craving for some broccoli? <laughs> Haven't you noticed that? Haven't you noticed you ain't ever woke up in the morning and said, I just got to have some kale. I just, I just... I just got to have some carrots and just got to have it. 